Yo, what is good, yo? It's your boy Tom back here with another video. And in this video today, we are going to be talking about all of the new Flash players, including the Flash glitch Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, DeAndre Jordan, and Chris Stapps Porzingis. And as you guys can see, Chris Stapps Porzingis is indeed a center power forward, which that kind of surprised me. I was super, super stunned when they did not make him an out of position card. Because honestly, I guess people were saying it on Twitter. We haven't seen a flash out of, flash glitch out of position card yet. And they were right. We also do get a James Harden Invincible card. Now, again, it's James Harden. So we've seen a couple Invincible cards in Allen Iverson. And also James Harden, who, in my opinion, aren't necessarily too OD. You know, obviously, stat-wise, they're very, very solid. But obviously, with, with what their players are, they're not going to be breaking the game or anything like that. Now, before we dive into each and every one of these players, if you are new to my channel and have not yet, please consider smashing that subscribe button as we are on the road to 70,000 subscribers. Now, if we get at 65,000 subscribers by the end of May, that would be absolutely wild. So if you are new, please consider smashing that subscribe button. So we're going to start off with Rondé Hollis Jefferson here, six foot six seven two wingspan. And the first thing I noticed is he's only 6'6 at the small forward position. Hot spots from both corners, none from a, above the break. 28 out of the favors, 13 on gold, 93 three ball, 95 driving dunk, 94 speed ball, and 86 ball, 95 speed acceleration with a 90 lateral quickness. Hall of Fame showtime, ready center catch and shoot. No steady Hall of Fame, unpluckable quick first step, gold ankle breaker. Defensively is very, very solid. So his badges, I would say he only has, what, 41 of them, but they are a very, very good 41. Tendency-wise, a solid jump shot, one on very quick. That's kind of, I don't want to say it breaks the card, but that's kind of a letdown, right? Because this card was looking very, very solid for budget players, and he is still solid, but that's definitely a big letdown for Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Pro two sides escape, pro three move by the back, as well as a quick dribble style. Rondé's okay, but the jump shot one is very, definitely kind of a letdown. Next, we do see Chuma Okiki. Now, the thing about this card, again, only six foot six. This guy has a lot more badges, though. 51 total badges, 30 of them being on Hall of Fame. Hot spots for everywhere outside the break. 91 three ball, 85 driving dunk, 93 speed ball, 86 ball. Hit 93 speed acceleration with a 94 lateral quickness. Only gold showtime. He does have Hall of Fame blinders on next gen. Definitely a W Hall of Fame range. Quick first step, unpluckable rim, trapper, interceptor, clamps. The Hall of Fame blinders is important. We'll see what his release is like. Has a quick dribble style, jump shot 12, okay? In my opinion, it's not a terrible release. On next gen, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of it. Quick dribble style, pro two size of escape. I don't think he's really going to be game breaking, but for budget ballers, he's going to go for a cheap price. And if you need a Hall of Fame blinders card, he might be able to do a job. If you're on current gen, I would never run this card. The only addition or the only good thing he has is that Hall of Fame blinders. After Chima, we are going to talk about Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Now, the first thing I noticed about this card, another 6'6 small four power four. They just love the 6'6 height today, I guess. Seven feet, seven foot wingspan. Now, this is a glitch card, so obviously they're going to make him so he can... Sh well, well, I'm confused here. I'm confused. You got a Michael Kidd Gilchrist who can't even shoot the ball. Only a 77 three ball with no hot spots. Does have 33 Hall of Famers with 19 on gold. Okay, he can't shoot the ball, but look at everything else. 99 driving dunk, 99 speed with ball, 99 speed acceleration, vertical strength, 98 lateral quickness. So you kind of see what he, where we're going here, okay? As far as just dunking, quickness, speed, he's going to be flying around the court. Hall of Fame showtime, hot zone hunter, doesn't matter. No range extender, Hall of Fame ankle breaker, dimer, quick first step tight, is unpluckable. Defensively, he's incredible. As far as a defensive and pure slasher, he's going to be a top guy in the game. But it's just like the dude can't shoot the ball. Jump shot 17, not a terrible release on very quick. Quick dribble style, pro two sides of escape. Do not run Michael Kidd Gilchrist. That's about all I can say. He's an intriguing card, right, with, with all of his stats and what he can give you. But please, do not waste your time running MKG. After him, we do see a Robert Reed card. Probably the most intriguing card yet that we have talked about. Considering he is 6'8 with a 7'0 wingspan. Hot spots from everywhere outside of the top of the key. 31 Hall of Famers, 22 on gold. 89 three ball, 85 driving dunk. 92 speed ball, 86 ball, 94 speed acceleration with a 92 ladder quickness. It's kind of the first thing I noticed. He's on the defensive end, he's definitely going to be able to compete, especially if you if you do run him at the shooting guard position. Gold Showtime, Hall of Fame range, volume shooter, flexible, dead eye, catch and shoot, Hall of Fame downhill, quick first step, unpluckable. Defensively, like I said, very, very, very solid. Tendency-wise, defensive tendencies is all that really matters, and those are incredible. KD's base on very quick, shifty dribble style, pro two size of escape, pro eight moving crossover. I'm going to tell you this right now. On current gen, if you're looking 
for a budget shooting guard. Robert Reed's the man with the plan. I'm telling you, KD's release is incredible. Yes, he might not have the length that KD does, but he does have the shifty dribble stop here on next gen, which is solid. Has the pro two size of escape, KD's base. I don't know on next gen how he's going to be without steady, but on current gen, if you're a budget player, Robert Reed might be the man with the plan. After Robert Reed, we are going to talk here about Mikael Bridges. Six foot seven, seven two wingspan, hot spots from everywhere on the court. Now, the first thing I noticed with Mikael Bridges, look at the amount of Hall of Fame badges they gave Mikael Bridges. 37 Hall of Fame badges, 20 badges on gold. And I love the wingspan here. I, I absolutely love that wingspan. It's what, seven inches longer than his height, which is absolutely incredible. 94 three ball, 90 driving dunk, 93 speed with ball, 86 ball handle, 95 speed acceleration with a 98 lateral quickness. The thing is, interior wise, like the post stats, the passing vision, passing IQ, and rebounding stats obviously aren't the best. But he's got everything else. Hall of Fame, Showtime, Flexible, Range Extender, Tyler Shooter, Quick First Step, Tyler Anderson, Puck. But defensively, he's going to be absolutely elite. Tendency-wise, absolutely elite. Six-wise, jump shot 80. It's a kind of release that splits the community. I think it's going to be solid on Mikael Bridges. Quick dribble style, pro two sides of escape, pro three moving by the back, and as well as a pro two tween. I think Mikael Bridges is going to be solid. He's kind of going to remind me, stat-wise at least, of a mini Kawhi Leonard. That's just kind of the first thing I think about when I went over this stats. After McKay, we are going to talk about Glitch DeAndre Jordan, who is going to be able to shoot. I already know it based on the hot spot. 6'11", 7'6", wingspan, 39 Hall of Famers with 15 on gold, 94 three ball, 95 driving dunk, 88 speed ball, 86 ball, handle 92 speed acceleration, 93 lateral quickness, great rebounds. This DeAndre Jordan is, they gave him Hall of Fame blinders. Nah, this DeAndre Jordan on next gen is so souped. That's all I'm going to say. Next gen wise, he's souped, and even on current gen, the dude's gonna be solid. Hall of Fame Showtime, Hot Zone Hunter range. Does have Hall of Fame blinders, I guess, on current gen, obviously, with his release. Probably not what you want to see. Hall of Fame Quick First Step, Gold Unplugged, but defensively, like I said, just absolutely elite. Tendency wise, absolutely elite. Six wise, set shot 17 on very quick, quick dribble style, Pro 2, Says Escape, Pro 3, moving behind the back, as well as the Pro 2 tween. There's a ton to like about Big DeAndre Jordan. If you are on next gen, especially, guys, just know he's going to have that Wilt Chamberlain release on very quick, which next gen wise, I think it's easy enough to green. DeAndre Jordan is going to be a top center on next gen in NBA 2K21, my team. After DJ, we are going to talk about Jalen Brown, 6'6", six 6'11", six, six, we spent hot spots forever. I don't know what it is with 2K always giving Jalen Brown like silver badges. What is, what is the deal with that? 95 three ball, 95 driving dunk, 94 three ball, 91 ball, 97 speed acceleration with a 97 lateral quickness. Hall of Fame Showtime does have Hall of Fame range, no steady Hall of Fame ankle breaker, dimer, quick first step, stage credits, tie and buckle. Defensively, very, very elite as well. Tendency wise, solid for JB. Six wise jump shot, 75 on very quick. A pretty solid release. Shifty dribble style, pro two, size of escape, pro three, moving by the back. All the way around, guys. I think Jalen Brown is going to be a, a solid shooting guard again. He isn't on a flash set, so I expect him. To be fairly cheap, if you're a Celtics fan and want to run JB, you definitely can. He's not an unusable card. He's just not that top-tier shooting guards like, like some of the guys we'll see later on in this list with Paul George. Next, we're going to talk about James Wiseman. Now, I haven't looked at this card, but I've heard some things about this card, and I've heard some good things. 7 foot one, seven six wingspan, 88 three ball, 90 driving dunk, 90 speed ball, 86 ball, 193 speed acceleration with an 89 lateral quickness. Now, just looking at the stats... Give me DeAndre Jordan stats over James Wiseman. But stats not the only thing. Hall of Fame, Showtime, range, flexible, hot zone hunter, no steady, quick first step, unpluckable. Defensively, is just absolutely elite. Now, the best thing I like about James Wiseman is the fact that he can run the power forward position as well. Tendency-wise, absolutely elite. Six-wise, Steph's release on very quick. Not really sure how I feel about that on a big guy. I think for a big man, it's going to be one of the best releases in the game, though. Quick dribble style, pro two sides of escape, pro three move on the back. Current gen, next gen, it's not going to matter. James Wiseman is going to be absolutely elite. If you are on next gen, you're probably going to want to apply the steady badge. The best thing I like about James Wiseman is I don't expect him to be that expensive. I really don't. I expect these two guys, Paul George, Chris Stapps, to really carry the load as far as being expensive. I don't expect James Wiseman to be nearly as much as he probably should be. Next, we do see a Dark Matter KP. As you guys can see, center power forward, 7376 wingspan, hot spots from everywhere, 49 Hall of Famers. 16 on gold, 96 three ball, 90 driving dunk, 89 super ball, 86 ball, and 90 speed acceleration with a 93 lateral quickness, decent enough rebounder. Hall of Fame showtime range, flexible Hall of Fame 
quick first step on Puckable. Defensively, is very, very solid. Tendency-wise, solid enough. Six-wise, Brooks release on very quick. That's a solid release. There's no doubting that. Pro two sides of escape. Pro one moving behind the back. I mean, here's my thing about, about this KP card. I think he's going to be a worse version of Bobo. I get it. Bobo is... It, I've always said this. I like Bobo cards more than KPs in 2K in general. And just you can see in the dribble six. Pro my moving behind the back isn't as good as Bobo's. I just like Bobo's length. I get it. KP is going to give you basically a... a better version of Bobo, but I still don't think, I mean, in my opinion, he's going to give me that much more than Bobo. If you get a Bobo with Hall of Fame Showtime, it's not even worth your time trying to upgrade to Porzingis. Porzingis is objectively better, but in my opinion, it's not going to be worth the upgrade. After KP, we are going to talk about shooting guard or small forward shooting guard Paul George. Six foot nine, six eleven wingspan, hot spots from everywhere. 48 Hall of Famers, 16 on goal, 97 three ball, 98 driving dunk, 95 speed ball, 94 ball handle, 97 speed acceleration with a 98 lateral quickness. Hall of Fame showtime, no steady shooter, Hall of Fame range, flexible hot zone hunter, Hall of Fame ankle breaker, tight handers, unplugable, hand us today's quick first step, stop and go. Look at the defense on Paul George. As far as the shooting guard is concerned, he is the best defensive shooting guard we have seen to date. Six wise, Paul George release on very quick. Quick dribble style, pro two sides of escape, current gen, next gen, he's going to be able to do it on both. Pro three, move behind the back. I'm telling you guys, don't sleep on Paul George. In my opinion, he is the best person that you can run at shooting guard right now in NBA 2K21. So just like that, Jimmy Butler went from being in my top two shooting guards to not being in my top two shooting guards. After that, we do see James Harden, Dark Matter. I like KD just a little bit more than Jimmy, by the way, in case you guys are wondering. Let's move James Harden, 6'5", 6'10", wingspan, 61 hoffers, 6 on gold, hot spots from everywhere. 99 in literally every stat that matters. Hall of Fame Showtime, Hall of Fame Blinders. If you are a next gen, that's something to notice, the Hall of Fame Blinders. Race that are flexible, Hall of Fame everything. Defensively has everything you need. Now, here's the thing. Hall of Fame blinders on James Harden could be tough considering he is 6'5". So on next gen, he's going to be able to hold it down. Harden's base on very quick. It's really going to make or break the card on if you, if you are on next gen. I mean, if you're on current gen, he's already, I'm already going to tell you he's not going to be anything. Next gen, he has potential. Quick dribble style, pro two sides of escape, pro three, moving behind the back. If you're on next gen, he might be solid. Still not going to be worth the price he's going for. So all in all, guys, I'm most excited about James Wiseman, Paul George, DeAndre Jordan, Cale Bridges, Robert Reed. All the budget cards, like the first three cards you see in Rondé, Chuma, and Michael K. Gil Gilchrist, I'm not excited about. Uh, Jalen Brown's going to be okay. Chris Stapps is obviously solid. I've just never been a big fan of Chris Stapps, especially if he's the center power forward. He's going to be solid again, but I just don't know how I feel about that. Uh, but overall, solid content drop. Can't really complain too much. Comment down below, which of these guys are you guys most excited about? Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys, and have a blessed day.